Hi, my name is Sarah Kornfeld, and I'm the author of The True, a trilogy of ghosts that will be published by Editura Integral in October 2001. I've been asked to read something, so forgive me if I look down. The piece is called When Words Need a New Home. I grew up as an outsider in America. My father was the managing director for the iconoclastic Living Theater based on 14th Street in Greenwich Village. Later, he moved south to West 4th Street to be the artistic director of Judson Poets Theater based in Judson Church. My childhood was separated from the commercial theater of Broadway and my dad was considered one of the fathers of the off-off Broadway movement, much like the independent theater scene found here in Romania. When I was growing up, the works of Gertrude Stein were at the core of my father's theater practice, where he adapted her writing to plays. And so too were the stories of Stein fleeing America for the creative freedom of Paris in the early 20th century. Her exodus was understood in our community as a necessary choice to explore new language and the form of writing itself. It was also understood that the community she built with other American expats, including Ernest Hemingway, Zelda and F. Scott Fitzgerald, Paul Bowles, Thornton Wilder and others, was both a movement for Europe as well as for America. Her salon, which she shared with her life partner, Alice B. Toklas, was situated at 27 Rue de Fleury in Paris, and there artists including Picasso, Brock, Matisse, and others whom she collected, flocked for conversation and new ideas. Stein settled in Paris for the rest of her life and became the hub for outsiders in what she described as her hometown of Paris. I worshipped her. In the 80s, AIDS started to ravish our community. Over 15 years, we lost over 100 friends. Theaters closed down and our creative drive was realigned to fighting for research and medical treatment for our friends. In 1990, when I graduated from college, I felt unmoored. I did not know what to do with my life. And so I fled to London to train at the Royal Court Theatre, where I met Alexandre Darier of the Boulandre Theatre, who became a love, then a lifelong friend, and a muse. It was a time of change, and I hoped it would be more like Gertrude Stein's adventure, but alas, it was not. American artists often run away. Generally speaking, we run away when both our lifestyles and our art making is considered out of step or dangerous to the status quo. Stein moved away because she found the commercialization of the writing world and the conservative politics of America unbearable. She fled to Paris to explore her writing, experience bohemian freedom, and ultimately find a publisher who wanted to take her wild ride with her themes, style, and daring. After four years of Donald Trump, I now really understand where Stein was coming from. During the Trump administration, the artists of the United States suffered on two fronts, economically and creatively. Although our freedom of speech is meant to be protected by the First Amendment, we saw an aggressive attack on our arts funding when the administration tried to shut down our national endowment for the arts. Artists, journalists, and writers were publicly shamed for contrary opinions, and many, particularly journalists, had their lives threatened. To add to the challenge, American publishing is now a highly competitive world focused much like during Stein's time with commercial success and the author as personality. Writing sometimes takes a back seat to your ability to self-market on social media. It is a bit of a quagmire. When I learned that Alexander Daria was sick and possibly dying, I came to visit him in Bucharest in 2018. I attended shows without understanding the language, but was moved to tears by the poetry and skill of theater artists. I was also honored to be asked to read from my published novel by the actress Antonetta Kajokaru in a public event. I was awestruck by my experience as a reader to a Romanian audience. They were simply the best listeners I had ever met. 
And though I was reading in English, the audience asked questions about the structure and meaning of the writing itself. I was struck by the clarity of artistic understanding and curiosity of the listeners, and I felt I was at home. But I was not. I was an American, and so how could I ever fit into the Romanian artistic world? When Alexander died, I wrote a book. I wrote a book that was about him and his death, but also about Romania. When I submitted it for publication, the American response was, how would you market this? And is this a memoir or not? And is this an American story or not? I found the response to miss the point. The book was exploring cross-cultural connection and artistic influences found only in crossing over inner and outer boundaries. I experienced what my country has always demanded, to fit in and create something that can be sold. I was heartbroken, but I was not surprised. I am very lucky that Maria Mew, the theater designer and Alexander Daria's partner, decided to save me. She took the manuscript to Editor Integral and Costel Postelage made an offer to publish the book. I asked to talk to Costel on a very early morning from my home in California. We met on Zoom during the tail end of COVID pandemic and discussed art, being an outsider, and his understanding of the book. You must understand, in America, it is rather unheard of for a publisher to take the time to talk with you, give feedback, and offer ideas to make the work better. I simply knew I had found understanding, even daring, to publish my strange manuscript, and I felt realigned with the tradition of Gertrude Stein. Sometimes you really do have to leave home and join other cultures to make sense of your own words. The only thing that is missing is living in Bucharest. I sometimes wonder what it would be like to be an outsider living there. I wonder what a salon of the century would be like, and I wonder what it would be like now now that COVID has become the great equalizer for artists around the world, we are without an audience. We are broke. We are filled with stories. Perhaps my collaboration with a Romanian publisher will open the doors for more exploration, more collaboration and more community. It's in our international tradition to do so, for we artists are nomads in search of homes for our world Though often lost in translation, we must learn to translate ourselves into new spaces and other cultures to thrive. So, vive la France. Vive la Romania. Vive to our collective words. Thank you very much. <laughs>